Hi guys, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge. We've got the Kershaw QCQ 4K XL, also known as the 6055. This is a big Kershaw Emerson collaboration knife. It's got your wave opening feature. Oh, side of my nose is itchy. And uh, we've got G10, we've got 410 stainless steel here. We've got 8CR14 MOV blade. Most people are calling this a spear point. And uh, of course you got a pocket clip because you need it so that you can use this Emerson Wave feature to remove the knife and deploy the blade from your pocket in one swift, easy motion. Let me show you how that looks and then we'll get down to the tabletop mode for this full review. By the way, 11 months ago, almost to the day, I reviewed the smaller sibling of this knife. This is the 6034. Very similar. This guy's a clip point instead, but other than that, very similar knife. So you can look up the review for this knife. I'll have a link at the very end of this video. But if you want a big boy, stick around and watch this. Even with my sore finger, I can use the two finger grip with my index, my middle finger, my thumb. You just pull the knife out and the blade gets deployed. You have to do it a little quicker, but this is the slow motion kind of method. You just sort of open it up and that catches on the seam of your pants. So watch this and it's deployed. Let's start off with it closed. Looking at the back side here, this is the uh, frame lock side. There's one thing that I'm not really fond of, and that is, you know, this is a made in China knife, but that doesn't mean it needs to be made roughly. And it doesn't have a lot of the finesse that I like to find in my folding knives, even though it is a budget knife, it deserves to have a little bit more finesse. Like the uh, cutout here for the frame lock arm, that was a wide kind of tool that they used to cut that out. I don't see why it needed to be that big. When companies like uh, Ganzo can even afford to do wire EDM and so you've got a really fine little cutout line. I'll show you a picture of one of their knives. It, I don't know, it just sort of looks bad to me when you've got that much. And you've got your pocket clip right there. It's a smaller pocket clip, which makes sense to me. It doesn't need, you don't need to have a huge pocket clip. The pocket clip is fully functional and you can put it right or left, except you need a longer set of screws for the other side. And I can't recall if this knife came with two sets of screws or not. But this set of screws, if I was to use them on this side, they would just go through the G10 and not get into the steel liner to uh, hang on to the threads. Okay, let's talk about the rest of the knife here. Like I said, we've got G10 here. We've got a flat or standard driver. Uh, I mean, screw right there. You need a, st a standard flat driver for that. Here we've got Phillips screws. And these uh, are also Phillips screws. Uh, these are size one. So now let's just do a little bit of size comparison. There's the uh, 6034. I've lined up the pivots. You can see that the 6055 is quite a lot bigger. Some of you are probably more familiar with uh, the Rat One. So there we are. The rat one is just slightly smaller than this knife. If we put them on top at the pivot point, you can see the blade sticks out just a tiny bit and the handle sticks out just a tiny bit. Let's do the measurements for this knife. The uh, cutting edge on this knife is 9.65 centimeters. That's 3.8 inches. The blade length, so handle to tip, 9.9 .9 centimeters, 3.9 inches. The uh, blade thickness, and I measured back here behind the thumb disc, 3.31 millimeters. That's 0 0.13 inches. We've got uh, the thickness of the edge behind the grind right up there. It's a little bit heavy. It's 0.63 millimeters. That's 0 0.025 inches. So it's a bigger blade, not quite four inches though. And uh, you've got, you know, 0.63 millimeters, a little bit thicker than it needs to be with 8CR14 MOV stainless steel. I wish it was just a tiny bit thinner behind the grind. The uh, handle length is 12.7 centimeters, that's 5 inches. 
The uh, grip area out here is 11 centimeters. That's 4.34 inches. The handle thickness is, without the pocket clip, 1.19 centimeters, which is 0 0.467 inches. And the handle depth, sort of the average handle depth, because you're thicker here and you're thinner here, but sort of the average, I went at two and three quarter centimeters, just over an inch. It's a very comfortable knife in hand for somebody with a hand my size. My hands are large, right on the borderline of extra large, and this thing fits in the hand very, very well. And the people with uh, medium-sized hands are going to find this okay. How much does this knife cost? It all depends on where you go shopping. The prices are all over the place. This knife is not a new knife. It's not new stock. It's been around for quite a while, several years, but it's still easily, readily available. Um, I found it on Amazon.com. So for the Americans, that's probably the best price I could find. It was $25.86 on Amazon. Canada, it's a fair bit more. Amazon. CA has it for $47.99 plus $15.32 shipping. You're looking at $63.31 total Canadian to get this. Uh, whereas Blades Canada, also known as uh, Warriors and Wonders, has it for $64.49. So for Canadians, if you want to spend that much for this, I got a link in the description below for you as well. So clearly this is a knife that was designed by Emerson. It's got the uh, Emerson logo right there on the uh, pocket clip. And you've got the Emerson brand name right here. But clearly it's made by Kershaw, which you get on this side right there. Kershaw 6075, 6055. And then you've got the KAI logo right there. That's Kershaw's parent company. 8C or 14 MOV. I don't know. I really wish they would have gone with a better steel for the price point that this thing sells at. But 8C or 14 is not a bad steel. The Rockwell hardness on this is usually between 58 and 59, which is a good hardness. We've got a stone wash on the hollow grind and satin on the bevels, on the flats, I should say. The plunge line is fairly quickly coming down to the blade thickness. But you've got a nice sharpness toil there, so when you go to sharpen it, it's easy to sharpen it without screwing up the uh, plunge line there. Uh, it's very easy to take the uh, thumb disc off with that Phillips driver, and then it's very easy to clamp onto any system to go ahead and sharpen it. Or if you lay it flat on a table like your Edge Pro, you know, you take that off and then you can lay it flat on that kind of table, and, and it's so easy to sharpen it. If you don't want this thumb disc at all, and you use the Emerson Wave feature to open the knife, just take that off and leave it off and it'll never get in your way. But if you're one of those guys who sometimes, you know, likes to deploy your blades with your thumbs, you know, go ahead and do that. I'm not quite good enough with my left hand, and that's kind of ironic because I'm left-handed. And that's because over the years, I have practiced so terribly much with my right hand that I've actually gotten better at knives with my right hand. Um, you know, even when I'm holding it awkwardly to deploy the blade, than I am with my left hand. It's kind of funny. But I do encourage left-handed guys to practice, practice, practice using your right hand with knives because a whole new world of knives will open up to you if you get good at it with your right hand. And most of the knife world is designed for right-handers. So, you know, you're going to give yourself access to a lot more choices if you can, you know, maybe not perfect, but get a bit of that ambidextrous skill going on. The G10's got a nice texture on it. It feels good in the hand, good grippiness. Uh, the uh, release spot for the frame lock is very easy to get at uh, with either my you know left hand. It just takes a little more action. You got to pull your thumb out of the way, and then I use my thumb to tuck it in. So in slow mo, I take my thumb, release it, and I start lifting with my index finger towards my hand. Pull my thumb out of the way, and when it's almost closed, I take my thumb and push it closed. That's how I do it with my left hand. On my right hand. I take my thumb and usually use my index finger for this part over here, but my index finger is pretty hurt, so sore, and I just close it over. It's much more awkward now with my finger being injured. So very easy to use. We've got two uh, white washers in here, so I'm not going to take it apart to show you the inside. There's no skeletonizing anywhere, so there's nothing really to show you, but uh, two of those white, probably nylon washers which I repeat over and over again in my videos. I really don't mind white nylon washers at all.
the modern technology on that type of, it's not really a plastic, but that polymer, it's actually a very good slippery kind of disc offering good stability. So there's no blade, blade play side to side. And, uh, you know, the stop pin and the pivot are good for blade play up and down. I don't like how pointy this tail end gets here, because if you are going to carry it this way, it can get kind of hard on your thumb. So if you're going to grip it this way, well, I'll show you with this hand. It, it can feel hot pretty quickly in your hand if you're holding it that way. Let's zoom back out again. So if you're holding it like this, you know, that gets kind of awkward on your thumb. This way, not quite as bad, but still awkward on the thumb. But the rest of the hand, you get a pretty good grip. Uh, you'd get a lot of protection from the front here. So if you did stab into something, your hand's not going to slide over very easily. So you don't have to have your thumb over the end, but I still like having my thumb over the end, and I don't like having a sharp point like that. On this guy's bigger, smaller brother, it's uh, a lot more comfortable. You can see it comes around, and then you, it's like they clipped it off. So it's the exact same shape as that one. But instead of just leaving it round, they clipped it off in the end. I wish they would have done the same thing on this guy that they did here. And that's a whole lot more comfortable on the thumb. It makes a, a definite noticeable difference. So that's not the best, but it's okay. I like the uh, jimping on the thumb riser right here. It's nice and gentle. It's not aggressive. And yet it's functional. You get a good amount of extra grip and good secure hold. And you can put your thumb over if you're going to do some delicate work for a short time. Not for too long, because the tip of this, even though it's rounded, you know, it does start to eat into the back of your thumb right there over time. Uh, the blade edge, the grind is nice and even, so the, it's a, a good grind. The final bevel is easy to sharpen. I've sharpened this on my TS Prof system. So uh, let's show you how well it cuts. Just regular cut uh, copy paper. say about half the time it wants to cut in there. It's been a while since I sharpened it, uh, but it should be doing pretty good. It's not doing the greatest. For some reason, this blade, the steel behavior, is not top-notch. It's, yeah, see that? It's okay, but you can see how that paper has got an ugly kind of cut to it right there. It's just, yeah, not great. And it depends on exactly where on the blade you get. So that's that. You saw this knife in my pocket briefly, but you might not have got a very good look at it. So let me show you what it looks like in the pocket. You've got uh, an inch and a quarter sticking out. That's about three centimeters sticking out. For this type of knife, that's maybe a little more than it needs, but you do need a good chunk of steel and G10 sticking out because when you grab it to deploy the blade, you need to have a good grasp on it. Okay, what are some other things that I didn't cover? Okay, the detent. It's a little bit soft, but it's okay. It holds well enough that it's a very low chance of this blade opening and starting to deploy when it's in your pocket. Uh, so the detent is okay. Thumb riser, I mentioned that, that's already good. Good hand feel, very secure in hand. I already talked about that. What are the cons? Well, I didn't tell you the weight, did I? 175 grams, 6.1 ounces. She's too heavy. They should have done some skeletonizing here. Uh, they easily could have skeletonized this liner because there's absolutely zero skeletonizing here and that could have easily been done. And with a little bit more effort, they could have taken some weight off the inside of the uh, working side of this frame lock. This uh, 410 stainless steel here could have been milled out a little bit, but they didn't do that. Um, I forgot to mention, we've got a backspacer that's uh, glass-filled nylon. Looks good. Easy to get at to clean out in there. You don't need open pillar construction to make it easy to clean. And that's about all that I want to say about this knife. If you can get it in the United States, I say the price is good. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. 
If you would like to become a uh, Patreon supporter, please click on that Patreon link at the bottom of the comment se- at the bottom of the uh, video description section. Everybody who uh, supports me at $2 or more per month gets entered for a drawing for a knife every single month. Somebody of my Patreons will win a knife. The value of that knife will be at least 30 US dollars, most likely more. It'll be the average value of the knives that I've reviewed that month. Thanks for watching. Remember, always cut towards your chum, not your finger, not your thumb.